Running a business can be quite a challenge for anyone. For someone to pack up their bags and start a business in a foreign country is an entirely different challenge. Meet the ambitious expats who choose the city of Breda as the place to kickstart their business. Welcome to Foreign Affairs. In the heart of Breda, down a small side road, we find a charming Irish pub called Mad Molly's. The man behind this pub is 46-year-old Leo Martin, an Irishman who first came to Breda 22 years ago. With the business being open for three years already, we decided to meet him and find out what brought him here. My name is Leo Martin. Um, I'm living in Breda now 22 years. Um, I come from a small village in Ireland, uh, in County Louth. Um, not many people know where County Louth is. It's between Dublin and North Ireland. That's what we always say. And there was a lot of work. But I used to get part-time work as a barman. I started off um, as an apprentice barman. Um, I ran into uh, a Dutch girl. She was an au pair in the village. She, uh, yeah, we sort of got on, so we started hanging out, so we started dating. The girl that Leo met had to come back to Breda to study, and he was invited to come along with her. But I stayed there uh, with her parents for the first couple of months. Um, because I didn't have any finances enough to actually rent a place. So I had to get work, but I thought it'd be easy because all the Dutch people speak English. Um, so I went to job agencies. Finding a job proved to be difficult without any Dutch. Well, I put myself into school first to, uh, to learn Dutch. Basically, just the basics, so I can actually get a job in anywhere really. It didn't matter at this stage because uh, beggars can't be choosers. Leo's first jobs included a call center in Tilburg and archive work at Hogeschool West Brabant. Yeah, then after about I think, four or five years, um, we broke up. Uh, it happens. So I stayed for another year. And then I was in between them five and four years of will I stay, will I go. He decided to go back to Ireland during the economic boom. When I went back to Ireland, it was, uh, it was a bit, bit different to the Ireland I left. It was, uh, everybody was doing well, there was jobs everywhere. He found it hard to settle and didn't even last a year before returning to Breda. Being away for four or five years, I actually matured a lot. So you end up being your own person. So being back home, yeah, it was sort of like a bit of a struggle. We asked Leo about some of the strangest things he noticed about the Netherlands when he first arrived. Yeah, the first thing I've noticed when I get off the plane, the very first time, I've noticed how flat this country was. And also the dikes, because when you're on the sky and you're looking down on the Holland, there's just these dikes everywhere and you're like, how did this happen? You know, what's this for? So you learn a wee bit about it, um, about reclaimed land and all that kind of stuff. Also, what the have for breakfast here is chocolate and gingerbread. We put them on cake at home, the hundreds and thousands, and now they stick them on bread in the morning. That's your breakfast. And that, was the, that was the major shock, I think, breakfast in the morning. After coming back for the second time, it was hard to find work again. Before I could walk from one job to the other, this time was a bit more difficult. Um, even though I could speak fairly okay Dutch, it was almost tough. But I started working again in factories again, but it's not exactly what I like. Um, I always done bar work. Um, I love bar work. Um, my Dutch was never good enough to work in a Dutch bar. But um, if you work in it, then I started working in Dutch bars. Before opening his own business, Leo spent 10 years working at Beer Café de Huiskamer. Yeah, the thing was, I met my wife at the time. We had, uh, uh, we met near where, I'm, where I started working in the Huiskamer. It was called Clapcut. Um, so we're together about 18 years, two kids. But we wanted to start a business of before, but we didn't know what. My wife was into maybe a tea shop, that kind of stuff. But I couldn't sit myself in the tea shop because no, just, <laughs> I like tea, but I'm not gonna do that. And I was stuck in a, in a barman's job that I can't see myself working for someone else when I'm 60 years old behind a bar. So yeah. 
decision had to be made, what am I going to do? Am I going to stick working or am I going to change career? Because you're going to have to change career uh, at some stage because you can't always be working in the bar. Once the decision was made, a plan was needed to put things into motion. So we got a business plan together, but there's only one problem. We have no money. We have no money at all, so we like, okay, not enough to start a business. So a friend of my wife, uh, he was on about, uh, why don't you start a crowdfunding uh, campaign? As Leo told you, we've uh, gotten the funding for the bar through crowdfunding, which is a, a, a funding platform where uh, private investors would loan money for your business. Um, we decided to do the funding through a, a platform called geldvoorelkaar.nl because they're the biggest platform and, and the strictest one, meaning that once you get through the door in a platform like that, um, there's the biggest chance that eventually you will finance your project 100%. Inge got the idea from a friend of hers. The project had 60 days to raise 67,000 euro. It not only gives you money for your company, it is always also a brilliant opportunity to do marketing before you even open the place because you have to get your friends, your family, but also people you don't know at all to finance your project. So you have to tell people about it before you even open the door. So um, we launched our project on that site, and um, which was enormously successful. A couple hours into the day, strangers were already contributing thousands of euros. It was going up and up and up and we were like, God, who are these people? We hadn't even told anybody. So uh, I got home from work that evening and we were already halfway funded. And we, uh, we had to be really, really quick in telling all our family and friends what we were up to, just to give them a chance to invest. Their goal was reached in just over a day. And even afterwards, we had people coming up to us, friends and you know, just people that you know coming up to the industry, like, hey Inge, I, I talked to my wife and uh, we would like to invest a thousand euro too. And we had to tell them, listen, you're too late. It's, it's already done. We don't need any more money. So we just told everybody you can just come and drink beer instead. <laughs> Another thing that had to go into consideration was the location. The bar they now have was suggested by Leo's friend. And the first feeling I came when I walked into this bar was that it's just lovely. It's just the right size. It's, it's not too big. It's not too small. It's just perfect. Their plan was really to have a traditional Irish pub because there is no traditional Irish pub. Not in the sense that we wanted, like uh, something local. Um, that you'll find back home in Ireland in a small village. We asked Rory, one of Leo's staff, to explain how he thinks the pub contributes to the community. It's an Irish pub is always about community. Um, it's uh, not a stereotypical bar where people come in and get drunk. It's mostly a place where people can come in and have a conversation with you, talk about their day, talk about their life. Uh, they can talk about anything, but just to get it out of the way. And that, that automatically uh, gets you to know people more on a personal level, which means that the bar or the people that come into the bar feel more like friends instead of customers. And it just changes the whole dynamic. Over the years, the bar has formed a diverse community of regulars. When there are sport events going on, the bar fills with people and a great atmosphere is created. The feel I was going for here was like, uh, yeah, traditional Irish pub. Um, it's like a community centre. That's what it's like. People come in um, from everywhere. A lot of business people from all different parts of the world. And they're here for either a month, maybe a year, maybe two years, contractors, that kind of stuff. So they come on their own. So they, they come in here and basically share their their day with you, you know, like how things was that day. And the US found different ways to give back to the community. One of these is by sponsoring a football team he played with when he first came over. About a year ago, uh, the team came in here and asked like, would you like to uh, sponsor us? Uh, and I said, absolutely, because it's like they helped me introduce me to new friends and all that. So yeah, it's nice to pay them back. 
by sponsoring them. So this is the second year on sponsoring them, PCP. So it's actually a great club. While opening more locations crosses Leo's mind now and again, his priority is to maintain and grow his community at Mad Molly's. In the future, we certainly would look at opening up uh, more businesses. Why not? Um, maybe in Breda, maybe just outside Breda. But I have no intentions of selling uh, Mad Molly's. I think it's uh, one of, if not, nicest places to go to in Breda. There's not many bars you can walk into and actually come in, even single women come in and sit at the bar and feel comfortable. Uh, there's not many places. Talk to the barman, tell me about your day. There's not many places left in Breda, certainly the centre. The bar is an important and unique addition to the centre of Breda. Its community continues to grow and remains open to any newcomers. Next week in Foreign Affairs, we'll meet an expat who's crazy about fitness. This personal coach even has his own brand of fighting equipment.